kids, do you have a spooky story to tell? If so, we'd love to hear it, fact or fiction. Send your story to microterrors at gmail.com to have it narrated on the Micro Terrors podcast, posted on microterrors.com, and published in a future Micro Terrors anthology book. Visit microterrors.com and click on the Listener Terrors tab for more information and to submit your scary story. Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine-tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family-friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Pumpkin Slice, written by Scott Donnelly. Fergus Burton loved Halloween. He loved everything about it, and everything about the season it fell in. The crisp autumn air, the scent of burning leaves, trick-or-treating, monster movies. It always filled him with a sense of comfort and elation. The season for him was nothing short of magical. But this year, Halloween had a different feel attached to it. Whatever it was, Fergus couldn't quite put his finger on it. The feeling started when he and his parents went to the Rustic Roots Farm Market. Mr. Burton, Fergus's dad, had a tradition of picking the largest pumpkin he could find and carving something spectacularly memorable into it. This year, the pumpkin patch at Rustic Roots seemed a little less inviting and a little more daunting. All of the pumpkins were abnormally large, and their gnarled vines sprouted out of their stems like overlong spindly fingers. Among the pumpkins, one particularly monstrous one caught Fergus's eye. Its rind was such a dark orange that it borderlined on blood red. Let's get this one! Fergus exclaimed. Impressed by the size and abnormal coloring, his dad agreed, but struggled to lift the pumpkin on his own, almost mistaking its unnatural weight as a thought-out resistance tactic. But Mr. Burton was determined, and with the help of his family, they were able to successfully get the pumpkin off the ground and all the way home. When the sun set, Mr. Burton began carving. He thrust the knife into the pumpkin's thick skin. A low, almost inaudible whisper emanated from the pumpkin, but Mr. Burton hadn't noticed. He continued to carve, but each cut felt harder than the one before it, and it was wearing him out quickly. Uh, this stupid thing is looking for a fight, he grunted, throwing the knife down and catching his breath. He turned to Fergus, who sat at the kitchen table next to him. Want to take a stab at it? He asked his son, with a wink that put emphasis on his predictable joke. Fergus hesitated, as an uneasy feeling swam invisibly in the air around them. Everything felt colder, and the barely audible whispers coming from the pumpkin finally caught Fergus's ear, although he thought the sounds were maybe just coming from a scary movie his mom was watching on TV in the other room. Reluctantly, Fergus picked the knife up from the table. With a sudden, conjured force, he drove the blade through the pumpkin's blood-red skin and carved through it with ease. His dad sat back and watched in disbelief as his son sliced through the pumpkin like soft butter. Fergus continued his work until he was done. Then he laid the knife back down on the table, the blood decorated with a stringy red pulp. Fergus sat back and admired the face he'd carved. It was grotesque, with a wicked grin. It was far scarier than he intended it to be. It was like some outside force lent its unsolicited assistance. As Fergus looked into the foul face of his creation, a chill ran through him. 
At once, he stood from his chair and quickly retreated from the room. His dad remained at the table, unable to remove his gaze from the weird and freaky face his son had carved. That night, as a cold autumn zephyr blew outside and owls hooted from the woods nearby, Fergus dreamed. He dreamed nightmares about twisted vines constricting him like snakes and pulling him into inescapable darkness. He woke up with a start, a cold sweat sheathing his entire body. He was convinced he heard whispers outside his window. Sitting up on the edge of his bed, Fergus gathered his courage as the whispers grew louder before walking over to the window. Pulling back the curtains, he looked out and down to the porch where he saw the blood-red pumpkin and its hideously carved face glowing menacingly in the luster of the full moon. Fergus closed his eyes and tried to control his breathing. The pumpkin was making him nervous and edgy. He turned around and returned to his bed. Hoping to keep the vine-wrapping nightmares at bay, he fell asleep. When the sun rose on Halloween Day, Fergus's dad found their front yard in shambles. The garden was in disarray, flowers and plants uprooted and scattered about. The white picket fence that bordered their yard was knocked down and broken. The windows on their minivan were cracked and looked like spider webs. It appeared as if something had run amuck during the night. It's those darn raccoons again, Mr. Burton exclaimed. Or the neighborhood cats, or maybe, he thought while stroking his chin, we're looking at a team-up situation here. Raccoons and cats working together? Mrs. Burton questioned her husband's logic. His dad could blame the raccoons and cats all he wanted, but in the pit of his stomach, Fergus knew it wasn't them. He could still hear the haunting whispers on the breeze. Halloween night finally arrived, and for the first time in his life, Fergus wasn't excited. He couldn't shake the dreadful feeling that he'd been building ever since they picked the pumpkin at the Rustic Roots Farm Market. When the trick-or-treaters came by, all dressed like ghouls, superheroes, and princesses, some admired the scary-looking red pumpkin on their porch, while others refused to come near it. Fergus didn't blame them. So it's definitely not just me, he thought to himself each time a small child halted at the sight of it before fleeing. As the night continued on, the barely audible whispers grew louder for Fergus, almost forming full words and sentences at times, even though he couldn't decipher their meanings or the words actually being used. Mr. Burton stood on the porch by the pumpkin, sneering at it. This stupid pumpkin, he grumbled. First it won't let me carve it, then it scares away half of our trick-or-treaters. He turned to Fergus, who stood quietly in the doorway. Fergus could tell his dad was frustrated and still a little off-put by how he wasn't able to carve through the pumpkin as easily. Fergus, unable to explain how that was possible, just shrugged. Well, his dad loudly continued, I think it's kind of creepy. This whole thing is creepy. With one hard kick, Mr. Burton launched the pumpkin off the porch and it smashed on the ground in a sticky, pulpy mess. Fergus's lip trembled as he watched the pumpkin explode on the ground. Deep down, he knew his dad had made a grave mistake. Then, confirming Fergus's fear, a dark mist seeped out from the pumpkin's gooey remains, slithered up onto the porch, and coiled around Mr. Burton's legs. His dad froze, his eyes widened in horror. The mist transformed right in front of him, manifesting itself into a tall, dark, shadowy figure with red glowing eyes shaped like angry triangles and a jagged mouth that leaked a flowing red mist. You have disrespected us pumpkins for the last time, the evil shadowy spirit wheezed. Year after year, you slice us up, burn us, and then let us rot. Now you will pay. Gnarled vines erupted from the smashed remains of the pumpkin, wrapping around Mr. Burton and dragging him toward it. Mr. Burton screamed, pleading for help. But Fergus just stood in the doorway and watched his dad get pulled down into the earth. 
He wanted to scream, but the shock of what he had just witnessed was enough to keep his screams at bay. The shadowy spirit then vanished, leaving only a lingering echo of its vengeful whispers in the dying Halloween night. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com where you can get the latest Micro Terrors news, read fun facts about each story, sign up for our monthly newsletter, and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you can become one of the terrified by joining the fan club at microterrors.com to enjoy exclusive perks like reading stories a week early, receiving complimentary books, and communicating directly with Micro Terrors writer and creator Scott Donnelly. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram using the handle at Micro Terrors. I hope you'll join us again soon for Micro Terrors. Scary Stories for Kids. Hey, mystery seekers, love spooky stories? Dive in to Creepy Clubhouse. Each month, you'll receive a box packed with books and gifts right to your doorstep, featuring a new spooky or mysterious theme every month. From aliens to Bigfoot to the Bermuda Triangle, perfect for young listeners like you who crave thrilling adventures. Exclusive from Micro Terrors listeners, use promo code TERROR10 to get 10% off your first box. Visit creepyclubhouse.com and then use TERROR10 as your promo code and start your spooky journey today. Join the club. Embrace the creepy.